Achtung, Achtung. A reminder that tonight's live stream, Thursday, October the 1st, is available to everyone, not just members. Join us at 8.30 for a double bill of Gurglebox. That's when we all watch Band of Brothers together, followed by a live version of the We Have Ways podcast. And here's the fun part. You get to ask us questions or make outrageous comments live. Yes, live. The link for the live stream is on the front page of our website, wehavewayspod.com. Or you can find it on Twitter at wehavewayspod or at Al Murray or at James1940. See you tonight. No dress code. But if I were you, I'd bring a bottle. Achtung, achtung. Welcome to We Have Ways of Making You Talk. Um, yet again, James Holland and I uh, here in um, a treasure trove, a veritable Aladdin's cave of olive drab and dark green stuff. James, uh it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're a bit blown away by all the tanks, and of course they, they're the sexy things, and we get excited about yeah. those. But what I love about what, what, what Tobin's got here is, is just the range of British trucks. Now, you know, so it's a quad, isn't obviously it? Obviously, I have my Dodge, which is American, but, but yeah, look yeah, at yeah. it. We've got a Morris Commercial here. We've got another. Uh, we've got an ambulance here. We've got a guy. Is that an ant? Guy quad ant. A guy quad ant. So this is for specifically designed for towing guns it's a field artillery tractor a fat as they call them mm. and in fact guy um cr- created the thing it's a very short wheelbase got a powerful winch on board the engine is is the most unlikely engine and it's a meadows four cylinder quite advanced in some ways in that it was an overhead valve but it was a boat engine uh, no. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot else you can say about it that's good um <laughs> wide and squat yeah, um, isn't it? It's really wide yep, and very yeah. squat. It, looks, and it doesn't look like a like a like an ant. It looks more like a like one of those sort of stink bugs. Well, you, the know, ants, ones, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the I ant. Um, some of these vehicles were called beetlebacks, yes. but it, it wasn't naming it after the insect. <clears throat> it was the guy's numerical numbering system for or letter system for how they <laughs> categorise the vehicle. Ah. Um, but it's it's actually a very um, uh, standard. Uh, vehicle underneath the, the the weird body you had seven crew who lived inside it and it, it is quite roomy and that would have towed uh we can an, see that from yeah. here actually it looks, it looks so what a 25 inord- pounds inordinately well well originally in 1825 right. which was um before the, the 25 pounders came um, on came, came on board yeah. um and then by um the beginning of the second world war when they went out to france they were pulling normally early 25 pounders yeah. um but later on, the Egyptians had a load of them, and they towed 17-pounders. And, I mean, we've, we've towed the 17-pounder and an 1825. Yeah. No problem. Absolutely yeah. no problem. It's slow. It, the engine is torquey, very torquey. Um, but it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So it can go up and down steep hills. Yep. It can tow a, a, an ammunition, limber, and gun. We dragged it, if you recall, to Chalk Valley a couple yes, of years back. Yes, 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 and yes, although we didn't go right up the steep hill um yes we, it takes you everywhere without any trouble and of Drinks course if you're it, it, yeah, sure but i mean if, you, if you're in the desert and you've got to go up sandy ridges and dunes and all the rest of it you, you can do that yep. and if you're in sicily and you've got to go up to all those mountain top hills it can, yep. and down the other side again it can do that i mean you know we've got photos from from of exactly these and uh, um towing 25 pounders in in sicily and you know, they, they kind of do what they're supposed to do, what, don't they? What happened to Guy Motors? Um, I think they were absorbed into one of the other truck manufacturers right. in the 50s. Right, right. Um, I, I did read which one it was, but the name escapes yeah, me. Yeah, I just, I, it's not a name uh, I'm familiar with, whereas we, uh, uh, Leyland were, were made, and Rover, yeah. we talked about Rover and, and Leyland making tanks. So that's interesting. But if you yeah. look at some of Le- some of Guy's designs, I mean, they were uh, pfft, late 1920s in appearance. Right. They, they were reckoned to be a good company. Or they were reliable vehicles. Yeah. But the styling was not their strong point. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's got it's got a certain amount of kind of charm. Know, well, charm and panache, I would say. Um, but generally speaking, I mean, you know, where. I mean, how, how do you? I mean, you've got a lot of British World War Two vehicles, particularly yes. early early war vehicles. I mean, what, what, what do you make of them all? I mean, how, where do they sit in the kind of pantheon of 
World War II vehicles. We we like them, and and I particularly like them. Um, I've owned American vehicles, and what I like about those is the fact that you can buy the spare parts. They're relatively straightforward to work on. The manuals are brilliant. They cover absolutely everything. But they, in my opinion, lack um, character. Whereas the British stuff, it's superb. You know, if you drive 25 miles in one of these, you know it. Um, <laughs> but, a, but a real satisfaction. It, it, you're, you're double declutching most of the time oh, you're working with brakes that are uh, marginal at best but you have to develop a technique you have to become quite skillful and when you've you've and that makes driving more fun doesn't it, it it's great fun yeah hmm well i yeah. think we should go and have a look at this some um, this ambulance because this is also a thing of wonder isn't it yes indeed so what have we here this is an Austin K2 ambulance, uh, the same vehicle uh, as was featured in the film Ice Cold in Alex. Right. Uh, which is an absolute British classic. Yeah. But this was a vehicle, it was the early standard British ambulance. And I mean, look at it, it's so, you know, you come up here, it's got lots of wood. Um, wood in the cockpit, wood, wooden floor, wooden back of the cab, there's a kind of... A door that looks like a door to a caravan to get into the kind of main <laughs> body of the back of it. Yep. It's super basic. I mean, inside. I mean, Al, come and have a look at this. It's it's just... You've never seen anything like it. I mean... Oh, yeah, that's pretty... You know, cockpits on vehicles have moved on a little bit, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no touchscreen uh, dashboard like in my Audi that broke down. It was brand new. Um, um, but it's rather fantastic, isn't it? It's... it's, it's um, yeah. They were coach built. Co yeah, they, and it's a yes. It's coach. It's, and it's they, coach built. Isn't they it? were That's built exactly by it. craftsmen, not the the very best craftsmen who who would work for mulliners and people like that. Yeah. But they were craftsmen. Mm. Um, and it's uh, two uh, wheel drive, but um, canvas side, canvas sides. Which again, you sort of think why? But they was reckoned to be cooler. I so, that makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? And, yeah, and lighter. Yeah, it's got vents in the roof. Um, so that you can get a fair old flow of air going through. They also had a heater which worked off the exhaust system, so you could heat inside if you wanted as well. Right. But we've moved around the back now, and you can see with the doors open, you've got room for four stretchers. Look at this, and the steps up, that's pretty yep. good. And then... Very, very soft Look suspension. Whoa. Okay, so, so I've got, I'm on a so wheel yeah, here. James is winding a handle that, that lowers the, the stretcher... Um, bed basically you put the gurney on the on this sort of uh on this looks like a steel plate and That's james is one hand else, so, it? so up it goes uh, how many of these were built i mean these must have been do you know off the top of my head i i don't know i suspect it was probably something like ten thousand. yes i was going to say yeah there must be at, at ten thousand of these it was a common vehicle and they were they were continued in use until after the war yeah yeah yes very nice to drive very soft suspension so, mm -hmm. um, because you're, you're obviously looking after your patients in the back um, as uneconomical as all of these vehicles are <laughs> um, but really nicely made a nice piece of kit well this is amazing because it's also got little sort of um, it's got little runners so that you can slot slide the, the, slide slide your, the, the stretcher in, in yeah. yep. the, the gurney in yeah and you're sat there and you're going to be safe there and it's even got a little a locking pin so that once yeah once you've got the stretcher in it's not going anywhere yeah. and the door you mentioned that goes through to the driver's compartment if you'll notice uh, on this side of it there's a fold down door yes and so the nurse who would be looking after the patients would open that door and she could drop down the, the step and she'd sit on the step and so she could look out and see what was happening on the road but also keep look back into the back and keep an eye on the the patients and check that they were all okay. slow down yeah yeah you're, you're jigging yeah. the lads about too much gosh what a beautiful beautiful it's a, it is a thing of its time. It really is. Um, beautifully made. It's got um, the original army lino on the floor. Yeah. You see the brown lino and that it would have been the um, the driver's jobs to make sure that that was kept highly buffed at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as part of their daily inspection. And presumably lino is absolutely A1 in terms of hygiene, isn't it? Easy to scrub, easy to disinfect. In those days, nothing better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, looking at this, it's just making me think of my old friend Sam from Wigan, who was, um, I think he was in six royal tank regiment and was wounded very badly at city reserve which is part of the crusader battles uh, when they relieved tobruk and he was transported all the way from there you know near tobruk in libya yeah. all the way back to um cairo i think it was in one of these in one of these and you know he, he he said he'd never had anything more painful in his and entire he probably life would have had one of because of course you know you're jumping up and down and bolting up and down yep 
detailing his injuries. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, you know, it is literally the old sort of luggage luggage ticket, isn't it? The little cardboard thing with string. Like a Paddington, please look after this bear label. Yeah. With your with your everything that's wrong with you and how much morphia you've been given and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Amazing. But they're nice vehicles and and um, it's uh, wonderful. This one is relatively new to us, but the, the other one over there that's in the um, uh, the workshop that's with the, been to Arnhem. It's been all over the mm. all over Europe. Yep. Um, and, and these steps fold up. The steps fold up again. Just. Um, very occasionally they get left down which is dangerous because they're easy to damage if you mm. drive with them down mm. but they fold up and it just makes it easier to get in and out either for people who were wounded or for the crew who are going up to keep an eye on the guys yeah, in the yeah. back but nice Gosh. to drive plenty nice and roomy spare wheel behind the driver um yeah good vehicles we're going to go to a break now uh, we'll see you in a tick Welcome back. Now, um, you can probably tell from the ambience that we are inside now. We were outside looking at the ambulance and now, well, Tobin, where are we and what on earth is all this gear? We're sitting inside a vehicle um, called a Bedford QLR, which belongs to my colleague Tom Cunningham. And this is an unusual Bedford QLR. The QLR indicates that it's a, a Bedford and that it's got a radio body. But this is a, a listening vehicle or a, a vehicle that was built specifically for the Y service, which was the listening service. Wow. So yeah. that's what all these uh, black boxes with dials and knobs and switches and... You, yeah, to twid- the knobs are there for twiddling, uh, as ever. Yeah. Um, uh, it's amazing. It's got an amazing smell, hasn't it? A kind of sort of... Well, it might be rotting socks, Tom, but, but, but it's, it's Baker also... Baker Light headphones, yeah. um, uh, a buzzer chopper, that's a called a, a fuller phone Mark IV. Yep. And uh, that's, I mean, there's all this ancient tech. Plywood. Well, this, yep. this, great been, invention. this was cutting edge in its day. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and there normally would have been six chaps who lived in um, here, effectively. And their sole purpose was to listen. And they were using um, what were very expensive American, what they call HRO receivers, um, which were uh, controlled by crystal, which made them very, very accurate. And by changing the crystals in each set, the guys could listen to quite a wide um, wave band uh, of signals. And they would listen to whatever the Germans or the Italians or whichever enemy you chose um, was transmitting at the time. And they would write it down. And they would jot it down onto signals pads. And those signals pads would then have the message torn off and those would be handed to dispatch riders. And the dispatch riders would take the messages back to Bletchley Park. Now, where we are here is not actually far from Bletchley Park and the vehicle would originally have been based around here when it was first built. Um, But it then went off uh, with the D-Day landings. I think it landed on D plus six. I'm not as up to date um, on the history of this as I should be. Um, But it went over to... It was in Europe. It went over to Normandy. It was credited at the Falais Gap, and that's this particular vehicle with capturing 500 German troops with the intelligence. This that very it, vehicle. This very vehicle. Um, <laughs> it, it then ended up going on Operation Market Garden and ended up ended the war at Eindhoven. And there was a sp- specific order given at the end of the war that these vehicles were to be destroyed so that the uh, information didn't pass into anyone else's hands. And although the innards were stripped out, the vehicle survived and in, by the 1970s had become a recruiting truck. Right. And that's how it survived. Right. That's amazing. Incredible. Really so where did you get all the kit from? Yeah, all where's the all the radios? The, yeah, all the, yeah. Well, I, I bought the vehicle um, and I bought it off a mate of mine. Um, and it was one of those things you buy and then think, oh, God, what have I just done? And it landed on the drive. And uh, I was sitting having a cup of tea with Tom and I said, what have I done? And Tom said, I'll buy it. And um, so Tom bought it from me. And bless his cotton <laughs> socks, Tom has cleaned it up and tidied it up and uh, got the whole thing looking a lot more ship, ship shape. Um, and, uh, yeah. and turned it into a pub. Uh, and also, yes, when we went to Arnhem last year, turned it into the Boar's Head, yep. which was a travelling pub, which was Wonderful. the best idea ever. 
amazing. It is something else, isn't it? It really is. And also to, to know that it's got that history. I mean, you know, a lot of the a lot of the tanks you have or, or, or other vehicles are kind you know, of you, anonymous, aren't they? They're yeah. sort of anonymous, but to know that, that this one was involved in D-Day, that this was involved in Market Garden is, is really quite something. And of course, the thing about the Y service is that, you know, we were talking about it earlier on, weren't we, Al? You know, intelligence is, it, there's, there's so much focus on Bletchley, and, and rightly so. Yeah. But you tend to think that British intelligence is all about code breaking in Bletchley Park, yeah. and it isn't. It's it's a single cog, That's and, right. and it's about getting all those different component parts and bringing them all together. And the Y yeah. service, this listening service, listening to to enemy radio traffic, is one of those other cogs, which when you put them all together, add up to much more than and the sum of their the individual sheer parts. Energy of of it, it's very easy taking messages to Bletchley Park from here. Um, but the, the effort of getting them when from Normandy, in Eindhoven, yeah, 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 the Eindhoven. same thing. They were given to a dispatch rider, and they were driven all the way back to Bletchley Park. Just bonkers. We, um, we've just been handled, handed a shovel. There's there's a bit of a story with this that we were told that um, the uh, this particular vehicle worked with an HMS Bulldog. And that uh, towards the end of the war, they HMS Bulldog presented a shovel, which I think on the back it says HMS Bulldog. Yes, it does on the front here, yeah. Um, how true that is, we don't know, but that's the story. Yep. Wigan and Leeds, HMS Bulldog. Well, well, well. Amazing. Isn't it? So it's, yeah. it's a vehicle what with a some piece history. Of history. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Fantastic. And it runs all right. Runs and drives. Tom drove it to Arnhem. Yeah. Uh, which is a all long the way. way. Yep. Yeah, I'm back. Well, and how is it quick or is it i mean yeah. like, no, not that quick 40 miles an hour if you wind it up 35 50 i think was the best you got out of it yeah. um it should we say it has momentum yes i yeah i understand yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah going up a long slow hill you will exercise all of the gears right but again we, we forget back in the day the speed limit in the uk was 30 miles an hour yeah and if you're doing 40, that so? yeah and if you're doing 45 you were considerably above the, the the speed limit on any road it was 30 miles an hour uh yes the the standard speed limit for a lorry was 30 miles an hour well there we go but it, I, thank I, god it's moved on james yeah. that that he, that's one of the reasons why American and British trucks are so different. In America, massive country, much higher speed limits. Yes, of course. They had to mass produce vehicles yep. to make it worthwhile selling them to the farmers and everybody else. Yes. So, and, and it was a big, big market, so they mass produced. Over here, 30 mile an hour speed limit. The Road Traffic Act that you mentioned earlier, and I've 1930, yes. That's right, which um, basically changed the way tax was calculated. Well, it, it made it... it, made it prohibitively expensive to have a vehicle on the road that was more than seven and a half tons that's it um and essentially it was a small market so consequently and railway is big it was it's big yeah. we've got the railway country. so you yeah, want yeah. the yeah. government yeah, yeah, wants yeah, yeah. people to use that yeah, for freight yeah. not the yeah. roads and, and so the roads. british trucks tended to be very small runs pretty much handmade rather slow um and that's why you've got the big difference between the two types of vehicles well there we go amazing i love it i think it's fantastic it's very cool in here yeah very cool yeah, yeah. Well, well, thank you so much for um, having us, and we hope we can come back another time because the, the, it just feels like we've what a wonderful day it's right, been. Tip of the it's iceberg, been it's been it? amazing. We've a had tip a great of the time. olive green iceberg. Thank yes. you very much. We're very pleased you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming. Wonderful. Cheerio, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>